Hello, this is Heather with Creativity by Heather B.E. Welcome back to the channel and welcome if you're just joining us for the first time. So today I am showing you a card using the Magic Picture Changer from Lawn Fawn. This is a die from their new release and I decided that I wanted to create a galaxy background. So because I was creating a galaxy background, I was going to need to use die cuts. So uh, this is a magic picture changer using die cuts and it does work. I'm going to kind of give you some tips and tricks along the way, some things that I learned, um, but it does work. So the stamp set that I'm going to be using is the Beam Me Up stamp set, which I believe was released last spring. And for my background, I wanted to use watercolors. So I'm using the Brutus Monroe Aqua Pigments. I'm using black, blue, magenta, blue violet, and then I will also bring in a little bit of the pearl for some of the stars and then also for the matte look. So what I'm doing is I have a piece of um, full-size Canson watercolor paper taped down to my Tim Holtz glass mat. And I wanted, I knew I needed to use a full sheet of paper for this because I needed to cut all of the die cut pieces from it to have one continuous scene. So I needed to have a pretty big sheet of paper. So what I'm doing is I laid down the magenta first and it's going to get covered up so I know it's a galaxy but I wanted some of that pinks those pinks to show through and honestly the end result card if I did this card again I would definitely leave more of that magenta showing because on the finished card you can't really see much of the pink but it looks gorgeous on this background. So as I'm laying the watercolor on, I am going through and some of it I'm picking up with a paintbrush. And then you'll see other times I'm just taking it straight from the dauber like there with the bottle and just dropping it on. And as I was doing this, I was kind of trying to figure out should I do it in like dabs? Should I just brush it on like I am there? And really it did matter. Um, any way you get it on there really is fine. I do use my Wagner heat gun in between some of the layers just to kind of dry it up. It is Canson watercolor paper, which is a really good water paper, but it was still getting really saturated because as you can see, I'm putting a lot of watercolor on there. And as always, I will have all of the products that I use listed below. And I try to find them, list them in a couple different places if they're available, just so that way you'll have some options. So I'm just going through and adding some finishing touches and I do let this sit and dry overnight. It's not anything I needed to do, but I am going to let it dry overnight. So I've got my background there and it came out honestly better than I thought it was going to. So I was pretty happy with it. But once I add the metallic pearl and flick the stars on it, I loved it. I love the way this came out. So when I lay the die down, I'm going to lay it over on the left hand side. If I did this again, I would really look at my paper and I probably would have moved it to the right where there's a little bit more variation. So I'm just flicking off of my acrylic block the pearl aqua pigment. This is the metallic. And I did add a little bit of water to that as well. And you can see it just makes a huge difference and really look like a galaxy. So I was really happy with the way that came out. So I'm going to decide which of my little... Martians space little guys that I want to use. I am going to stamp out both sizes of the spaceship. However, I'm only going to use the large one. And the little three-eyed guy down there, he is going to be my main little man. And this is going to be a birthday card. So my thought was he would be on the front and then just him by himself. And then when you pulled, what would change is the cake and the gift would look like it's being dropped from the spaceship. So I, and when I did it, you'll see on the card, I kind of flipped the cake and the gift around to give them that illusion that they were being dropped from the spaceship. So I'm inking this up with Gina K Black Amalgam ink. This is a great Copic friendly ink, which I am going to be using Copic markers to color these. And I'm not doing anything fancy. Um, the three eyed little guy there, I am going to do him in purple shades because I wanted to keep all of my coloring really light colors because the background was so dark. So I'm going to do him in a little bit of a purplish color. So for my spaceship, I'm using C0, C C1, and C3. And then for the glass on the top, I'm going to use B0000. That was four zeros. 
and then B00. And for the little lights, I'm going to make them a yellowish green color. So I'm going to use YG11 and YG13. And I realized right about this point that I needed to have something driving that spaceship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of post-it tape and tape that down. And then I chose a little cutie, the one actually that's down there on the bottom. I stamped him up in the spaceship. And I decided just to color him blue, and I'm going to use B01 and B02 on him, so that way he kind of blended in and you couldn't tell that I stamped it afterwards. I am using a, this, I believe it's Sandy Onox, uh hex chart here, and I love this thing. You'll see me pull it out three or four times in the video. Every time I get a new Copic marker, I go and I fill it in immediately. That has helped me so much to be able to figure out what colors go together and what blends. It's, if you do not have that, I'll put the link down below. It is definitely worth it. So I'm going in and for the little guy here, I am using B63, BV01, for B63 for the darker. For a mid-tone, what I did is I touched the BV01 to the B63. And then I also used BV00. So he wasn't completely blended as far as all the colors went perfectly together when it was blended out. I like the way it ended up, which I was okay with because, let's face it, he's a Martian. So he might not be blended perfectly. He might have some colors that are a little different. So I was good with him. So now I'm working on the little guy up top. Very simple on him. Once again, I used B01 and B02. I did go over with the B00, I believe, for his eyes is what I use for his eyes. And also for the little three-eyed Martian's antenna little things. So for the cake, very simple. It was small. For the candles, for the flames, I used YR04. And for the actual candles, I used YG13. And the top of the cake, once again, trying to keep it in light colors, I used RV20, RV21, and RV23. And in the bottom of the cake, I wanted it to stay white, looking white, so I used W00. And for the gifts, I just pulled those same colors in that I used for the candles and the cake. So I left my stamps in my Misty, and I like to do this on Copy Coloring and I use my Misty because then I'll put my paper back in after I'm done coloring and restamp it again. It just really helps the to get those crisp lines again. Um, that sometimes with the Copic coloring, it can kind of diminish, and that's with anything. Colored pencils, if I'm using my Misty, usually, sometimes I forget, but I try to remember to leave those in there. So, I have my, this is the top part of the Magic Picture Changer, and this is the larger area. And I'm using a pencil to go in and mark where my little scene's going to be, because it's not a very big area. And so I set my little pieces down, and you can see I've kind of got the cake flipped upside down. Oh, and I did realize when I was die cutting that I actually needed two of those little three-eyed Martians. So I did have to cut and color another one of those, and I did that off camera because the picture's changing, but he's staying there. So the other thing I decided to do was the adhesive. I had to make sure I had an adhesive that was going to keep them down because the images that I die cut were actually going to be cut. So I decided to use double-sided score tape. It's eighth inch. Uh, one eighth inch and it works great. So if you're going to use die cuts, that is the adhesive I suggest is something strong. I wouldn't use a liquid adhesive. I would use something very strong because you are going to be die cutting it and it's going to be pulling in and out when you're actually moving the picture changer. I use Canson watercolor paper for this as I said before and the paper was thick, which I didn't have really any problems with it sliding. What I ran into is the pull tab. It, after doing it several times, it kind of started to bend a little bit up at the top. I don't know if it was from the watercolor paper or what it was, but I would probably try a different type of paper next time or reinforce that pull some way. So I saw in a video, and I'm sorry I was talking over this on the film, but I I saw a video where for this magic picture changer, if you um, go ahead and rescore those lines, it makes them a lot easier to fold in, and it did. They folded in so easily. So I folded those in, added, I'm going to add some score tape 
um, eighth inch score tape that's going to fit perfectly in there and then I'll adhere those down. So another tip I saw when I was watching some videos of some people that have already made some of these just using stamps not the die cuts was to really use your ant an anti-static tool. So I use an anti-static bag so you're going to see me doing that a lot. You're also going to see me once I get it together really sliding with it and playing with it so to speak but because the more you move it up and down the easier it seems to go. So that was that's why you're going to see me really playing with it a lot. So I'm just adding my score tape and you want something strong here because this is actually going to be the track that's going to keep your inside part where it's supposed to be. And the pull tab on the top is what's going to stop it from falling down in the bottom and you can see it sitting off there on the left. And that is actually the pull tab from the add-on set which I am using. So it's kind of hard to show on camera how this fits together, but it fits together very simply. So I'm going to try to tip it to the side. Basically, the top one cuts completely on that left side. And so you just take them and tuck those little pieces down in to the inside piece part. I hope that makes sense. So you can see I'm just taking the top one and tucking it right down into the bottom. And then once all of them are together, and I pull, and I have to tell you, I was holding my breath here because I wasn't sure how these die cuts were going to work. And it actually, you can see it worked pretty well. Now, I did push it down too far, and I didn't leave it on camera, but I pushed it down far enough where it popped out, and I had to put the little tabs back in again. But I was really excited that it actually moved, and it worked. So that was, you know, one big battle down after all of this coloring and, and, um, and water coloring. So I was excited. And I am going to use uh, the double-sided score tape again here. And this is where I'm going to put it on the outside and then so that way you can close it up. So I did notice once I closed it up, it was a little more difficult to move. So I'm not sure in the future if I did it again with die cuts, instead of using a double-sided score tape, I would probably put double-sided score tape and then maybe a very thin foam tape just to give it a little bit more lift, but I'm not sure what that would do with the track. So that's something I would kind of have to play with. It still worked as you can see there, but I did notice it was a little bit tougher to get it to slide once I actually close it up. So I'm just moving that to make sure it's in the center of the two little pieces, the track. trying to get that in because I want to make because once you close it with that score tape that's it <laughs> so there I've got it closed and you can see it's pulling in so it is working but you'll see how it's kind of it's uh, it's a little harder to push down that time so this is the large frame and this actually come is part of the add-on the add-on comes with that larger frame and then the pull tab and whether you're using the large frame or the small one you want to make sure that when you're putting your tape on it you keep it to the outer edges because you don't want to stop that mechanism. You can see I'm going to stop here and play with it again to make sure it's still working. Um, and I was also trying to figure out if I would be able to fit birthday in there somewhere and there really wasn't room. If I did this again, I would probably move him up a little bit because let's face it, he's in space. He could be floating. And so I could add the birthday because I'm going to stamp on the outside, have an out of this world. And I am using Brutus Monroe Clear Embossing Ink, and I'm going to heat emboss that with white Lawn Fawn embossing powder. And I'm just going to draw the three little dots with a white gel pen when I'm done, and then I put the birthday inside. But like I said, I probably would have had the sentiment on the inside part of the changer if I did this again. So I'm just adding my heat embossing. And I really, I don't use the Lawn Fawn white embossing powder very often and I really like it. It went on very crisp. I, it heat set really good. I really liked it a lot. So I'm going to take my white gel pen and just add my little dots and you can see what it'll look like when it's on there. And I already have the double-sided tape on the back. All I have to do is remove the backing to put that over top of my front panel there. So I'm just taking off that score tape and you can see 
Um, I've got it at a diagonal and that was one of the tips that I've seen in videos is when you're putting that on, put it out at the edges or do it at a diagonal. And I honestly think on the bottom, it might have even been up a little too high. That's another thing I would do next time. Um, whether I do a stamped version or a die cut version would be to move that score tape out a little bit. So you can see my little Martian guy there. And I decided that the Magic Picture Changers is kind of small. So I decided I wanted to use two different colors of cardstock to mat it. And they were too plain. They were too stark plain. So I decided to take some more of the metallic aqua pigments, the pearl, and just splatter some on there. Just anywhere. It didn't really matter. I was trying to keep it around the edges because the middle will be covered up. But I just wanted to give it something because it was just too plain against that background that I had watercolored. And the colors I'm using here are Lawn Fawn, Sugar Plum is the purple, and I believe it's Brutus Monroe Midnight is what I used for the, the darker color there. The blue, I was going to use Blue Jay from Lawn Fawn, but it was a little lighter blue than what I wanted. I really wanted something dark, not exactly black, and that Midnight was a good color. So I'm just adding that on. And the only thing left to do really is to add on my little guy in his spacecraft, his UFO up to the top. And I will say when I put him down, I should have left him right there. Because what I do is I move him over a little bit so it looks like the gifts and the cake would fall out of it. And when I do, it's over on my pool tab a little too much. And so if I did this card again or if you recreate this card, keep that little Martian guy over a little bit because it really, it kind of messed with where I could pull it. So that's the card. The die cuts did work. I was very happy with that. Um, I encourage you to try it. Like I said, there are some things I learned and some things I'll do next time. I am going to do another Magic Picture Changer video here soon using stamps because I think it's really fun and it's really easy to use. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you've been inspired today. Have a great day.